Hey there, everybody. Uh, the purpose of this video is to get you guys a formula, if you need it, for the standard deviation of a data distribution. Um, in class, we'll often use a TI graphing calculator, which actually has a very nice uh, built-in for grouped standard deviations. But I've noticed that Excel, at least, doesn't have one, or doesn't seem to have one that I can find. Um, nor does it have a, a weighted average calculation. You actually have to do the calculations in the spreadsheet. So I started thinking to myself, man, it would be nice to have both those formulas available if you needed them for whatever reason. So in class, we already derived the, uh, the formula for a sample average, or an average, I guess, but we called it sample averaging. Um, you take the summation of all of your data times the individual frequencies and then divide it by the sum of the frequencies, which ends up being the, the sample size. So that's, we use that in class um, from time to time. We don't use it anymore because we tend to just do stuff with, the, with technology now and then interpret the results. But if you ever needed that formula, that's going to come in handy. And we're actually going to use that later on today. I was uh, messing around with a formula today, uh, trying to come up with a, this, as concise a a relationship as I could for you, and I noticed that having that handy in the back of my mind uh, came in handy. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, so anyway, what I want to do is I want to start from a generality. Uh, in, rather than starting with a set of data like, you know, 1, 5, negative 3, I'm just going to start with what would be considered just a set of data like x1, x2, x3, going up to some x element. I'm going to call it x Let's see, I shouldn't use n, because I've been going to use an n for say, we'll call it like x sub i. I remember using that in college a lot, x sub i, which is just the ith data point. It's the last data point. Like, if you're putting them in order, it's the last one. It's not relevant. It's just I'm trying to keep, trying to give it a nice generalized uh, uh, name for you. And then each of these are going to have frequencies. f1, f2, f3, dot, 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 f sub i. So in class, for example, when we were looking at our key data, you know, zero keys were held by two people. So zero keys were held by two people. One key was held by four people. Uh, two keys were held by six people. And then dot, 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 continue, continue, continue. And then finally we had somebody at the end who had like 32 keys were held by one person. So you've got this, this data distribution. Okay. Now, the idea of standard deviation is that you're measuring, on average, how far data points are from average. So if you think about it, the, the, the crux of looking at standard deviation of any data set is calculating that average distance. So let's focus on the distance first and then work the average bit into it. And I'm honestly going to start by looking at something called the sum of squares. And all this is, if you remember this from class, I remember mentioning, mentioning this in passing, I'm going to look at each data point and how far it is from the average on average. Okay, but I'm going to look at it from the squared point of view. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the square root just yet. That'll be the very last thing we do, just like we did in class when we did the, the raw data by hand. So what I need to do is I need to look at the first data point, x sub 1. How far is that from average? How about x sub 2? How far is that from average? And then dot, dot, dot. x sub i. How far is that from average? Now, we already talked in class. The problem with this is if you just averaged these results right here, it ends up being 0. It's an extra credit in your uh, homework should you choose to attack it algebraically. I'm actually giving you a pretty good hint on how to do it right here. So what we did in class was we did not stop here we squared each of these results. And then there's a bunch of them in between there, right? And then we averaged those sums of squares and came up with our results, which is totally awesome. The difference between what we did in class and what this is, is that this term right here isn't, doesn't just occur one time. It occurs that many times. This term occurs that many times. This term occurs that many times. So you actually have to multiply each of these by their frequencies because it, they occur multiple times. And that's where the fun begins right there. The, anal the analysis of that particular expression right there. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding up all of these sums. 
And that sum of squares is where, like I said, where the fun begins. Okay? So that's what the, per the crux of this video is going to be analyzing um, that bit right there. Cool so far? All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to actually do a little tiny bit of algebra, which I know might make your, your skin curdle a little tiny bit. But I'm going to expand. See how this is x1 minus x bar, the whole thing squared, and then all the way down? I'm going to expand each one of those chunks and see if that can't show me something. This is what I was messing around with earlier this morning. So if I was to actually expand all this, check out what I get. I get x1 squared minus 2x1x bar plus x bar squared, and that whole thing times f1. That's just this top one here. Plus, I get x2 squared minus 2x2x bar plus x bar squared times f2 plus, and this is going to continue, this pattern of this trinomial is going to continue, only changing by the index all the way down. And we're going to go dot, dot, dot. And we're going to end up with xi squared minus 2xi x bar plus x bar squared fi. And that's going to be the sum of all those squares now written out in algebraic form. Good so far? Okay. It's going to be a little, little bit worse before it gets better. <laughs> just, to give you a, just to give you a heads up. That, that, I'm now going to take each of those pieces and I'm going to distribute in the, uh, the uh, frequencies. So I'm going, to I'm going to do one thing that might make this a little bit... No, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. This is the original data. We'll just leave it here in the corner. So keep that in mind. We're going to, we're going to use him uh, momentarily. Let's bring all of this over to here. So now what I'm going to have is I'm going to have x1 squared times f1 minus 2x1x bar times f1. Just distributing it in. Plus uh, x bar squared times f1. That's the top line, again, distributed through now. And it's going to look the same all the way down. x2 squared times f2 minus 2x2 x bar f2 plus x bar squared f2 plus dot 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 x i squared f i minus 2 x i x bar f i plus x bar squared f i. Okay, so far? Okay, again, it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better, but it is going to get good, I promise you that. Now, what I noticed was some stuff jumps out at me. For example, I started looking vertically and not horizontally and looking for overriding patterns. The first thing that really jumped out at me as I was kind of playing with this was these right here. x bar squared times f1 plus x bar squared times f2 plus x bar squared times fi. Now, you've got to remember there's a whole bunch of other stuff in between. There's a dot, dot, dot. So there's an f3 times x bar squared. There's an f4 times x bar squared. There's an f5 if there is an f5. So essentially, what you end up with right here, what you end up with in that chunk of the formula is you end up with f1 times this plus f2 times this plus f3 times this. So you end up with f1 plus f2 plus f3 dot 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 plus fi times x bar squared. So, so essentially, what you've just done here is you've added up all of these, which means you now have your sample size, all the frequencies added up. So this whole chunk right here just simply becomes your sample size times x bar squared. Well, that's kind of sweet now, isn't it? Because that means this whole thing just disappears and becomes that closed formula right there. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So let's keep that in the back burner of our mind. Okay. Now, what I also noticed, looking through here, I said, man, there's some cool stuff going on there too, right? I mean, you've got, you've got uh, uh, x1, x bar, f1, x2, x bar, f2, xi, x bar, fi. So again, remember, logically, you've got an x3, x bar, f3. And I noticed, wow, there's an x1, f1, x2, f2 x3, f3. That kind of reminds me of this, doesn't it? x times f, x times f, x times f. Like, That's kind of cool. So what I decided to do was I decided to analyze just this piece here. And when I break that out and bring it over to here, 
I end up looking at, I'm going I'm to factor out also a negative 2x bar, which is in each term. And when I pull that out, I end up with x1 f1 plus x2 f2 plus dot 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 xi fi. And then I yank out a negative 2, whoops, I'm going to run a space, x bar. <laughs> Sorry, chalkboard. We'll come back to that in a second. Now here's where the cool algebra comes in. This is the numerator of that, yes? So if I can rewrite that differently, I can rewrite that as the sum of xf equals x bar times n, times n, which would be the sum of the frequencies. The sum of these would be this, your sample size. That's kind of rad. So I can pull all this out and just say this is n times x bar times over here negative 2 times x bar. Putting all that together, I get negative 2 n x bar squared. Now why does this make me happy? n x bar squared, n x bar squared. This is one of them minus two of them. That means this column and this column have just completely collapsed down to simply this minus this, which is minus n x bar squared. Totally cool. We're going to sum that up in a second here. We're going to have to clear some board up here in the corner, I believe. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything cool about this. I mean, I can't factor anything out like I could here. Uh, every term is unique in its components. But we can write it using summation notation to make it a little bit neater. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking around for my eraser. We're going to come uh, down. Can I write it down here? Can you see it? You might be able to. I'm going to put it up top. Uh, we're going to put it right in here clear a little bit of board space. What we're going to do next is we're going to collect all these ideas into the sum of squares formula. Okay, that's the idea at the end here. So we know that this piece here is n x bar squared, and this piece here is minus 2 n x bar squared. Now this piece here, we can't really write using using any kind of a closed shorthand like we did here. This, it was so cool, these collapsed down into those pieces. This piece really, if you look at it though, is just the sum of each of the data points squared times its frequency. So we can write it as just that. It's the sum of each of the data points squared times their frequency. So if we put all that together, I think what we end up getting is what colors haven't I used yet? Orange. We end up with the sum of squares formula. And the sum of squares is going to be the sum of x squared f minus n x bar squared. And that's pretty cool at the end of the day. That's pretty cool at the end of the day. That's the sum of the squares of the data. Now remember, it's a sum of squares. Two things are going on here. Number one, it hasn't been averaged yet. And number two, it's squares and not linear, uh, linear units. So you got the wrong units and it's not averaged. So here's where, depending on what standard deviation you need, you're two steps away from being done. The whole point of this video was to give you a sample standard deviation formula. So starting with the variance, you take the sum of squares, summation, x squared f, minus n x bar squared. Let me clear a little bit more space out of here. Okay, that's the sum of squares. If you need the sample standard deviation, you divide by n minus 1, and then one last move. Draw the square root over the whole thing to knock the units back down to something useful. And my friends, there is a beautiful formula for you guys to use for the standard deviation of a set of grouped data. I wish the board was bigger so we could put more on it, but I think if you followed that along, you, uh, you got the gist. So that was fun. That was a fun morning for me. Hope you got something out of it. You now have a formula that you can put into Excel should you need to. And if you ever need help, of course, you can always ask me. See you in class.